On this episode of 5 Minutes of Cloud, we're going to discuss the deployment models for the National Institute of Standard and Technology's cloud model. So in the NIST model so far, we've discussed a number of different components. So the National Institutes for Standard and Technology cloud model has a set of essential characteristics, things like on-demand and elastic and broad network access. Um, it has a set of service models that includes things like software as a service or infrastructure as a service. And the last description was the deployment models. I actually think of them more as access models. Public, private, hybrid, and community are the, the core models there. Public is the most common one that people talk about today because there is so much use of public cloud resources. People keep talking about the fact that in a public cloud, I can actually get access to resources anywhere in the world, any time in the world, at any scale that I need in order to actually accomplish whatever business task I have. Uh, there are all kinds of implications to public clouds because there are potentially data sovereignty issues and uh, data security issues and actually just data transfer issues in some cases. If I'm moving terabytes of data, for example, sometimes that takes time uh, to make use of public cloud. But it is the most common model that people think of today. Now, the inverse of that is a private cloud. So this is usually something people think of as a cloud system that was established exclusively for the use of a single enterprise or a single entity in the government, government uh, aspect of the model. And in that enterprise or entity, um, the private cloud is something that is, is really restricted in access. Not necessarily the fact that you can get to it, but the fact that you can get into it is potentially the thing that's really restricted. Uh, the fact that you can get access to resources is the part that's potentially restricted. Uh, one of the nice things about private clouds is that potentially you can provide very tight security around the resources, security around the data sets, and if the private cloud lives in the same data center as most of the rest of your data, moving data into the cloud or out of the cloud can often be very, very uh, efficient. Um, so private clouds are actually fairly popular from that perspective. <clears throat> the ability to use these resources very efficiently. Um, but you do have to still manage the infrastructure that supports that cloud, whether it be an infrastructure cloud or a software services cloud that has been established with, with this private cloud model. Community cloud is effectively a, an intersection between the two. Um, it's a larger group of resources or a larger group of potential users that would get access to a community cloud. Um, common communities are things like a federal government, like a set of universities, for example, maybe the Northeastern universities in the US or uh, the Nectar uh, cloud that is a, a part of the Australian university system. Um, only users of that particular system can get access to that cloud. That's what makes it a community accessed cloud. Now, often these clouds happen to be infrastructure clouds, but there's nothing that limits you to that. You could have a cloud software as a service offering that is only available to students within the US, for example, uh, just as a way of, of, of describing that. So that's the concept of community. And then the last one, um, which I think is the, the hardest to really describe, unless, again, you think about it from the concept of an access model, is hybrid cloud. Well, hybrid cloud, one thing that I think was described fairly clearly in the document is the concept of access, user access into the cloud service. Um, and the concept behind hybrid cloud was that there's one interface into access of potentially multiple other access models. So that one interface might give you access to public cloud resources and private cloud resources, or potentially community cloud resources. But the hybrid model was access to multiple rather than just one. Most people talk about hybrid cloud today don't necessarily ap apply that access model to the, to the equation. They're usually talking more along the lines of, well, I have access to public and access to private cloud. But when I access the public cloud, I use one interface. When I access the private cloud, I use another. There are tools that are starting to federate the resources, federate the access into these clouds, and I think we're actually going to see more and more true hybrid based on at least this particular model's description of hybrid cloud systems. Uh, so that's coming along the way. Again, when we've described cloud, we've started with the essential characteristics. We added a set of, of service models, uh, software, platform, or infrastructure. And now we've described the deployment models, or in my term, the access models, uh, public access versus private access versus community, uh, a larger group of private groups. Uh, and, and then lastly, this concept of hybrid access, all with a single interface into that particular cloud domain.
Thanks for watching. This was Robert Starmer bringing you five minutes of cloud. Five Minutes of Cloud is brought to you by Cumulus Technologies, the company I actually work for. Uh, and we really appreciate the fact that you actually attended and watched this, this little segment. Um, we obviously have a YouTube channel here, so please subscribe to that. Uh, we have Twitter. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Yeah, I, I do actually find some interesting things to say on Twitter once in a while. Um, and on top of that, we have a mailing list. Uh, if you subscribe to the mailing list, we have a, a free report, basically five pitfalls of cloud that you can avoid uh, if you get my report. So uh, why don't you hop on over to our website, uh, sign up for the mailing list. You'll get that report delivered to your inbox uh, shortly after signing up. And I think that's also another very interesting and important read. Thanks so much again for watching.